That's a song called uh, Scapegoat by an artist, Hajin. I uh, am still in Leviticus and I'm sort of, not skipping, but I've uh, plundered through, uh, since last we spoke, uh, the ritual for cleansing healed lepers, the law concerning leprous houses, the law concerning bodily discharges, which I'll actually get back to when I get to blood, uh, and then today, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, where once a year the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies, where God's actual presence would come. Not only just the way in which he is, he is ever present in his covenant relationship with his people, but like literal presence, seeable, physical, manifest uh, Shekinah, a cloud of glory, they described it as, would come into the Holy of Holies, the, the most sacred and central part of the temple. And this was the once a year time for a little extended Sabbath, and it was a time of fasting and preparation, and its focus was uh, repentance and remission of sin, which is the uh, paradigm on which God still moves to heal all covenant broken people wishing to be made whole, or not even wishing, but seeking, truly seeking and finding, repenting and obeying to be made whole. So in this ritual, there was also a, hence the gets my goat bit of punnery, uh, there is a scapegoat uh, part of the ceremony where they would take a goat and the priest would pray and uh, ask for the entire nation's sins to be placed upon this animal and it would be let go into the wild. And the wild of the desert in that day for a, a somewhat or completely domesticated goat was no type of safe place so it would no doubt be torn apart um, by the wild beasts of this world for its uh, assumption of transgression. I'm not the first person to say this, but it doesn't make it any less exciting or true that in this Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year on the Judaic calendar, in which uh, recognition of sin and recognition of guilt, and I'll get to that in a second, was, uh, was assumed, felt, repented of, and healed in a temporary fashion because they'd have to come back and do it again. It didn't, uh, didn't do away with all the other sacrifices that were necessary to heal uh, broken relationships between uh, men, men and women, men and men, and men and God, women and God. But it was a time to uh, consecrate upon, like spend consecrated time upon that and then surrender the, the transformation and the salvation and the healing and the remittance and the, and the uh, uh, removal of the stain of that sin by God. I'm not the first person to make the scapegoat Lamb of God uh, analogy and that Christ came to fulfill that self-same role for all of Israel and all of his bride, the, the church, all those who he calls into covenant, and indeed colloquially often referred to as Israel, as the new Israel, as all those who the God of the Jews, Jehovah, Yahweh, uh, called to be his own. And that Christ took very much that same position as the scapegoat, in that he, uh, like the priest in, in this uh, Levitican directive goes into the Holy of Holies and the presence of God and then returns and comes out to the people and and uh, offers sacrifice for them as well. But Christ, and Christ sort of functions in all these zones. He is the high priest who uh, scapegoated, sin uh, commuted to him, our, the burden of our sin, the burden of all our sin, that he was the holy sacrifice. He wasn't just a broken, scared goat a precious goat to some uh, landowner or farmer or goat raiser. But the Son of God, the Holy Son of God, sinless Son of God, 
commuted our sins upon himself and then was sent out of the walls of Israel and torn apart by the wild beasts that were the crowds and the Romans and then entered in he to the Holy of Holies and returned and came out of the presence of God and was bodily available um, but transformed it is said when he came out and came out and spoke the truth of what he had done and from there from this one uh, simple life has trickled out throughout all of history now that we all know this tale to some degree or another even if it's just in the way we keep uh, time of years um, or how we transmute and pollute it with politics the, the, the goat would take care of it for a year and Christ has done it to take care of it for an eternity so what I beg of you is not to wait for it's going to be October I think 7th and 8th uh, of this year for that sub Sabbathian season but don't wait for then let now come with me now let now be your day of atonement recognize your guilt and this is what I want to briefly want to speak Get, guilt really gets my goat because it was their guilt that got that goat sent out to the wilderness and destroyed and it was our guilt that uh, led to Christ's death on the cross sacrificial he was willing uh, and ready to do it even in his own anxiety about doing so because not fun not fun at all but this is guilt, and I think guilt is something we, in our modern time, have, have played with uh, and assumed a definition of, which I don't think is, is uh, wholly accurate, certainly somewhat accurate. But I was looking, I was like, um, so guilt, just to go all dictionary style, the, this is the guilt I'm really speaking of, although the second is important too. This fact or state of having committed an offense, crime, violation, or wrong, especially against moral or penal law, culpability. And two, a feeling of responsibility or remorse for some offense, crime, wrong, etc., whether real or imagined. And then, oh, three, conduct involving the commission of such crimes, wrongs, etc. But it's funny to me, our modern uh, dictionary slash Encyclopedia Britannica, Wikipedia, only t says the one definition because we're pretty self-centered so it says guilt is a cognitive or an emotional experience that occurs when a person realizes or believes accurately or not that he or she has violated a moral standard and bears significant responsibility for that violation closely related to the concept of remorse so it's removed the idea of guilt as guilty as in guilty as charged as opposed as uh, and it's only made it a relation, a uh, relative uh, uh, per perception. Uh, the Day of Atonement is is about both. It is about uh, the recognition and the in the of that the emotional cognitive experience. But it, in literal terms, and I'm a little bit more of a literalist, it is about the removal of the actual guilt of the guilt, meaning the the burden of having committed that offense. You are guilty of that crime. Not the, the sad, guilt doesn't just mean, oh man, I feel really bummed out, which I feel like is how guilt is just meant. It's like something that just makes you feel bad. Guilt itself is, you are guilty of the crime. You have done this thing. And we all are guilty of self-governance and enmity twixt ourselves and God. Let alone all the, the little ways in which we break ourselves, we break others, and we break unity with with Christ and with God so this day of atonement has already come for all of you it was set from the from the early covenant with his holy nation but his holy nation is so much bigger now and so I just pray that his holy nation would include you that you would lay your hands your soul's hands on the sacrifice of Christ and let him carry your sins as far from you as the edge end of the the world's deserts are from where you are right now because you may be in a spiritual desert right now and I want you to be full of forgiveness and water the holy the holy water not of a, a thing blessed by a priest but the holy cleansing 
redemptive water of Christ's sacrifice. Because to remain in guilt, the, the, the result is death, loss, enmity, eternal separation. It's the heaven or hell paradigm. But the, the cost for heaven has already been paid. The lamb has already been slain. The scapegoat has already been pressed upon with guilt. Will you take that cost or will you struggle to make this world, this life, this everything on your own? Peace be unto you on this day of atonement. Amen and Selah. Done!